I'm Adrian and today I'm going to be talking about the song Public Image by the band Public Image Limited who most of you probably know is the band that John Lydon formed when the Sex Pistols broke up and uh, much as I love the Sex Pistols I think it's hard to deny that Public Image Limited were probably the more musically interesting and groundbreaking band. Guitar on this one is played by the great Keith Levine who is another favourite of mine, another one of these great British guitar anti-heroes and I, I group him with people like uh, Johnny Marr John McGeeock, uh, perhaps James Honeyman Scott, all, all people that I've done videos on in the past and players who are more about um, sound and ideas and originality than they are about doing anything that's particularly technically difficult or doing anything that's obviously guitar hero-ish. So uh, this song is fairly easy to play, um, lots of fun to play, uh, let me show you how it's done. So the song starts with just a bass line, then the drums come in and when the guitar enters it's very straightforward to start with. We've just got a bar of A and a bar of D. So, uh, so very simple, just an open A chord, open D chord, um, down up eight notes in the strumming hand. So one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Um, then the, the song kind of gets going properly and what I've done is I've divided it up into three different sections. I'm just going to call those A, B and C to keep things simple um, and I, I will post the, the music and the tab up on my website so you might want to follow along with that just to make things a, a little bit clearer while I'm explaining the song to you. But uh, let's start with section A and I uh, just want to talk briefly about the, the bass line um, and what the bass is doing in this song because I think it's, it's really important. It's, it's one of those songs where the guitar part on its own doesn't really make that much sense without the bass line uh, underneath it because Levine is really just playing some very very simple kind of two and three note shapes and the, it's the bass that's dictating what is going on with the the overall harmony I suppose. So uh, uh, the, the bass and the drums are really just playing a, the same eight bar loop for the entire song and, and the bass is just going from E to B does that three times and then a bar of A and a bar of D um, and that literally just carries on for the the entire song while uh, Levine is, is doing his, his thing uh, over the top of it so um, let, let's get stuck into to the the guitar part uh, pro properly then um, this is what I'm calling section A and uh, if I just play it through for you it goes something like this um, <laughs> So uh, as you can see most of it is played around the fourth fret just using these little uh, two and three note shapes. I'm um, going to start off with this two note shape. I'm holding down the fourth fret on the G and the fifth fret on the B. I'm going to play that three times. Uh, then I'm playing the fourth fret on the B and fourth fret on the G, playing that three times. Um, and we're really just going back and forth between those two shapes, play, playing it three times on each of them. So. I'm um, just playing down up eight notes in the right hand, but uh, three times on each of these shapes, which creates kind of a, an interesting rhythmic, uh, rhythmic effect. Um, and I think, think we're doing that four, four times all together, going between those two shapes. So. Something like that. Um, just occasionally I think you can hear the, the fourth fret on the D string coming through as well. Um, I can't really detect any particular pattern in it. I think it, it's fairly, fairly random but um, I, I guess what Keith Levine is doing is he's barring all the way across um, onto the D string as well and then just occasionally um, that, that uh, fourth fret on the D string, that, uh, that F sharp note is coming through. <laughs> So I don't think you need to be too too fussy about that uh, that particularly. Um, so that's that's the first bit of, of the A section. Then we've got this. Uh, we're moving over onto the top three strings, barred at the fourth fret. I'm playing that three times. 
then I'm putting down my little finger at the seventh fret on the B string and, and playing that together with the two fourth fret notes. So you've got that, that nice, nice sounding chord shape. So we've got the fourth fret, put down the little finger um, and then just strum that three more times at the end of the bar. So if, if I put, put all of that together in time, we've got one and two and three and four and down, up, down, up, up, down, up. So that's the first uh, four bars of the A section. This is my left hand position here. Um, normally I've got my thumb kind of over the top of the neck for, for, for bending or for uh, muting purposes. But for this particular song, I'm, I'm adopting more of a, a classical kind of left hand position. Just, just enables me to make that stretch a bit more easily with my little finger there. And, and this is the kind of hand position that Keith Levine seems to, to, to be using when you, you watch him play this song in, in some videos. Um, but uh, on with this uh, this section of the song and the next four bars go like this. So m more of a similar kind of thing really. We've got this, we're back to our initial two note shape, playing that twice. Um, then we're playing fourth fret barred across the top three strings. Uh, four times, I think, putting our little finger down at the seventh fret again. Uh, playing that uh, six times, I think. Then, then going to the fifth fret on the B string. So it's like a little E triad, I suppose. So fourth fret on G, five on B, four on the, the high E. So. Uh, um, So interesting thing here is where he's changing to the new kind of sound. It's very often on off beats. Um, I think uh, we're actually resting on beat one of uh, of this bar, coming in on the and of ones. It's one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. So something like that. It should all be a bit clearer if you look at the, the tab and, and the music. I think, as I say, you don't need to be super precise with this. I, th I think that's the rhythm that's going on most of the time, although it does seem to, to vary a little bit as the uh, as the song progresses. Um, and then the next bit, it just goes back to the, the the same the same part that we had at the top of the song, the A, A to D. So I'm just going to play all of that A section one more time, nice and slowly. So two, three. Something like that. So uh, that's what I'm calling the A section. Uh, B section, um, loosely I suppose this is the, the verse of the song, this is where, where Leiden starts singing um, and it's, it's much the same as the, the A section in, in lots of ways, there's just a little bit more, more space in there I suppose, space, space for the, uh, the, the lyrics to, to come through. So um, if I play the B section it goes like this, two, three, four. <laughs> So more of these same uh, two note shapes. We're starting with uh, B5 and G4, playing that twice. Then we're going to B4, G4, playing that once. Then back to the fifth fret um, on B, fourth fret on G. Playing that three times. Fourth fret on both strings once. Fifth fret again uh, on B, fourth fret on G, three more times. 
and finally back to the fourth fret on <laughs> both those strings. Um, don't know why that was so difficult to to, to explain. It's um, very simple to play. Um, Uh, rhythmically, uh, again, we're coming in on the and of one. So we're playing this two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Um, we're just letting that last chord ring out for the rest of the bar. Um, again, you might be able to just detect that F sharp note in there somewhere if you listen closely to the to the recording. So one more time, we've got two, three, four, one. And uh, because we're coming in on the end of one, I'm starting that with an upstroke. I'm playing up on the on the off beats, down on the the down beats, on the stronger beats in in the bar. Um, and then that whole pattern just repeats another couple of times. Uh, then we're back to the A to D pattern. And I think sometimes he's just missing the uh, the downbeat on the A chord and coming in on, on the and again. So one and two and three and four and one and two. But uh, essentially that's the that's the next section of the song. Let me again play the whole thing slowly for you. So one, two, three, four, one. <laughs> So that's the B section of the song. I've got one more bit to the song. I'm calling this the C section, um, and it's super easy to play. It's the bit that goes like this. We've got um, well, that sounds, sounds a bit like the edge. This part of the song, doesn't it? Who uh, I think uh, was, was an, another of those players that was strongly influenced by Keith Keith Levine. Um, now this bit. So re really easy to play, just uh, more of these two note shapes, but up a little bit higher. Um, I'm playing B7 and uh, high E ninth fret. Uh, playing that three times. Um, then I'm switching to the seventh fret on both the top two strings. Playing that three times. And I'm simply going back and forth between those two shapes three times on each of them. As simple as that. I guess the, the only tricky thing here is rhythmically, again, we've got this, this group of three notes played in an eighth note rhythm. So you've got that interesting kind of rhythmic effect going on. I think you know, maybe the hardest thing to, 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 to do here is just to keep track of where you are in the bar. So you, you definitely want to be kind of counting and you know, nodding your head, trying to keep time as you're playing this, because otherwise it's, it's pretty easy to get lost. But we've got one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two. It's really hard to, to count that and to play it at the same time. But you, but you see the kind of uh, rhythmic thing that is, uh, is, is, is going on there. Um, and uh, again, that section lasts once through the, the whole eight bar loop. So we've got... Something like that. I think think that was eight bars. It's hard to tell actually without the without the bass line in there. So that occurs once, kind of in the middle of the song. Then at the end of the song, it's the same thing. I think it's just re repeated for uh, for another eight bars before the song uh, ends. So I thought I'd talk a little bit about the gear I used when recording this video. Always getting quite a lot of comments about how do I get this or that sound in my video. So I thought I'd start including a bit of that information in the videos themselves. Uh, so what I'm doing in this video is, is what I try and do in most of my videos is just to, to get as close as I can to the uh, original recording using the gear that, that I've got. Um, I'm not exactly sure what Keith Levine would have used to record this song, although he was he was known for using these quite weird aluminium guitars, and I certainly haven't got one of those. Uh, but I have got my Jazzmaster, which I, I use for this video. It's um, it's just a I think they call it an American '65 vintage. Jazzmaster, so it's, it's a reissue of a, of a 60s 
jazz master um, it's a really really nice guitar i'm really enjoying playing this one a lot at the moment and uh, from there i'm keeping things very simple i'm just using one effects pedal for this video a uh, bit of chorus uh, boss ce2 um, according to my not particularly extensive research keith levine is likely to have used an electro harmonics electric mistress pedal on the the original recording that was what he he tended to use uh, use live but i don't actually own one of those um, although if, if uh, the people at electro harmonics are watching this video and would like to send me one um, i would uh, i would use it in my videos and say gushing things about them on the on the internet but uh, for, for now i'm making do with my my boss ce2 both, both controls there set set at about uh, about noon um, from that just going into my Fender Superchamp, which is the amp that I use to make most of my videos. Um, it's nothing to do with the, 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 the latest version of, of, of the, the Fender Superchamp, the, the amp they call the Superchamp these days. This is an 80s amp, um, all valve, a really good sounding little amp, great for, for practice and for, for small, small gigs for, for recording. Um, I, I use this one, one all the time. I got it off eBay um, a few years back. It's in, in really nice, nice condition. And uh, if you're interested, these are my, my settings. Not, nothing particularly special going on there. Um, all of the distortion is actually coming from the amp on, on this video. So I've, I've just pulled out this control here um, to, 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 uh, to, 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 to give me a bit of gain. That, that's the, the lead channel on this amp. Um, so that's, that's that. And then from there, I'm just recording it with a trusty short SM57 straight into my computer. So there we have it. I hope you have a lot of fun learning to play this song. As I said earlier, it's one of those guitar parts that doesn't really make that much sense without some kind of musical context. I think you need to have that bass line in there. So when you're practicing it, I really do urge you to play along to the original recording. Uh, what I did at the start of this lesson, I just put together a quick loop in Pro Tools for me to, to play along to. So what I can do is uh, upload that to my website and make that available to you to practice along to uh, should you so wish. Um, also imagine this would be a great song to uh, to play in real life with other musicians so uh, if you're lucky enough to know a bass player and a drummer um, I imagine this is a really good kind of jamming song like the bass line and the drum part are nice and easy uh, so uh, you know next time you're in in the rehearsal room why not give this one a go uh, but that's it for now um, take care and hope to see you for some more video lessons very soon bye